So this is how you set up the audio on the T2Is uh, using the Beach Tech adapters. So the first thing we do is check the camera and we've got to make sure that we've got Magic Lantern on the camera or this is not going to work. And you can see we do have it. We've got the readouts here, so that's perfect. We can check a few things while we're in here. I'll go into the garbage can to go into the menu. Analog gain's around 20. Uh, I'm going to hit the set button, maybe drop that down to 17. Between 17 and 20 is usually fine. Left and right should be at zero. Input source should be set to external stereo. And you can see we have no audio meter showing, and that's because there is no external stereo uh, microphone set up right now. Okay, I'm just going to turn it off. I'm going to take the Beach Tech adapter. We're going to put it so the buttons and dials are at the back. And you can see there's a little dial here, and we're going to take the set screw, put it on the mount for the camera, and do the attachment. I usually just angle it slightly so that right at the end, once it gets attached, I can just give a little bit of a turn to help tighten it on there. Uh, I'm going to put the tripod adapter plate on there as well too, just so I have that done and out of the way. It does start to get a little bit bulky, so it makes it a bit easier if we have that thing on there now for mounting on the tripod. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is hook up the cable, because we've got to know that we've got our output from the Beach Tech device connected to the input on the camera. Without that, of course, we're not going to get audio as well. Okay, so those things are connected. Our input, by the way, our XLR input is on here. We can see the, the three pins, and that's our right channel. If we wanted to, we could also hook up a left channel and say we could put an external mic like this road mic up on top and plug that input into the left-hand side. So that would, uh, that would work as well, too. So next thing we're going to do is turn this thing on and we're going to power up the Beach Tech adapter on the bottom. We've got our input. You saw it flash just for a second, but that's not actually recording any audio because we still don't have a mic plugged in. Uh, by the way, you do want to make sure that you're set to high on both channels. This is, I, I usually start with the meters in the middle. We are going to use just the right channel, so in fact we can turn this one all the way to the left. It shouldn't really matter. Um, we've got our phantom power to the 48 volt position. And that's because inside of the microphone, we don't have a battery. If we put a battery in here, we can turn off phantom power, uh, but we'll leave, that, uh, we'll leave it on for now. And make sure that you're in tele mode. There's two modes here, well there's three. There's off, there's normal, and that's if you're doing like an interview type thing. And tele mode is the three foot rule, so if you're about three foot away from your subject, you want to have it in tele mode. For film, I just always leave it in tele mode to make, it, make, it, uh, make adjustments on the Beach Tech adapter. Okay, so next thing, we're going to plug in the mic. Very simple. There we go. And it should be ready to go. And then what I'm going to do is plug the other side into the right input over here. And at this point, hopefully we're seeing audio meters. And yes, we are. We're, we're seeing them in the green. Now, what, what I normally do is an audio test. I'm going to start recording, by the way. Um, and we should see the bars. There we go. You can adjust this while you're recording, but normally what I do on the first take is get the audio adjustments out of the way and get those done. We're only recording on a single channel, that's fine. In post-production, you'll simply map that onto both channels. Very easy to do in Adobe Premiere. Uh, just to go through the settings, XLR input. We've got the microphone set to phantom power, 48 volts, because we don't have an internal battery. We've got the right channel set to high. We've got this adjusted to the point where we're in the greens. We've got out. And we've got the microphone input here, and uh, all is good in the world. All right, let's see if that worked. Okay, so I'm going to go back and just answer a few questions about recording audio. The first thing you can see, I'll get this out of the way, is, are the audio meters, and it's in the green. So that green tells us that the audio range is ideal, but you notice on the right side, I'm only about a third of the way. If I increase that, you notice that it starts to, it's called clipping. And you can actually see the red light coming on down here, which tells us that the audio is periodically clipping. Uh, up here, you can also see that it's hitting the yellow and then the red. So that would be too high, that setting. And you'd simply adjust that down to find the optimal level where you're just peeking out um, at close, as close as possible, but without going into the yellow. And especially not going into the red, so, uh, so because you, you want to avoid clipping as best you can. Okay, so that's the meters, and again, usually what I do on the first take is get the maximum audio level set by adjusting this dial, so it's just peaking below the uh, yellow, but well into the greens. 
Okay, next thing, um, using two microphones. I've hooked up a second microphone here, and what I'm going to do is plug this into uh, the other channel. So we've got the right channel here. You can see the R where this XLR cable is plugged in. So I'm going to plug this into the left side. Now, we don't want to plug anything in here because we've already used the right channel on this side. Uh, I'm going to turn this microphone on. I'm going to put it, uh, this one I'm just going to, s I'm going to set to uh, the middle. We'll just leave it like that actually and we'll work on the, on, on the meters. I've got this meter turned right off so, and I do have it set to high. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to start to bring this up and you can see the top one is beginning to show. What I'll do is I'll turn the right channel right off so it's not distracting. And there you should be able to see, hopefully, uh, the top is recording now just on this mic. And if I tap it, you can see that it's just that mic. If I tap the other microphone, you see nothing's happening. It's because we've turned it off. Now, why in the world would you want to record with two microphones? And they're, they're, I've got them adjusted roughly about the same. They're both uh, nicely in the greens, but not peaking beyond into the yellows. So the range is good. Why would you do that? Well, the simple answer is it gives you backup audio. I like to record like this. This is my favorite way to, to run things so that I've, I've actually got uh, a microphone on top. Uh, and, and in addition to that, I've got a, a boom pole mic so that I can get in nice and close with the audio. This usually works fairly well and it saved me a few times. I think I mentioned this already. Either channel can be mapped um, and used on both channels inside of Premiere. It's a very, very simple setting to do. All right, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to power this down. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn the camera off and we're going to start unplugging things. We're going to make sure that the microphone is off here. We don't need to turn the other microphone off because uh, we're, using, we're using phantom power. To undo the cables, this cable, what you have to do is push in a little part that says push. If you just try to pull a cable out, it will damage something. So I'm going to push that with my thumb. I think you, hopefully you can see that. And then I'm just going to pull the cable out like that. To plug it in, you don't have to do anything, but it will not come out unless you push that little button in and then out it comes. On the other end of the XLR cable, uh, hopefully you can see that, you do have to push this little button in here. It won't pull out as well too. These cables lock in because you don't want them randomly falling out in the middle of recording. And so what we have to do is pull it out like that. The next thing I'm going to do is take the shock mount and we're going to mount that onto a boom pole. So here's the boom pole. They're often zipped up in one of these uh, one of these cases. If you've got it zipped up inside the case, simply remove it first. And then what we're going to do is thread it on like so. And it just takes a, a few turns to get it threaded on there properly. And you can turn this as well too. Make sure it's seated on there fairly tight. But like anything, I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, try not to over tighten anything because you'll, you'll break these connectors. Okay, I'm going to adjust this a little bit like that. I'm going to press on these two clips which will allow me to insert the microphone. I, again, I'm going to make sure the microphone's in the on position. Because we're using phantom power, we can leave that mic on. We want this to point at our actor and so we can change the angle of the mic simply by adjusting this little set screw here. Um, next thing is to plug in the XLR. This is a little bit loose. By the way, we can adjust each of these by simply tightening uh, the, the closest connector. Once I tighten that down, it'll lock. I'm going to loosen that off though, pull this out, tighten this one, and you can see it's now threaded in there or it's, it's now holding fairly steady. So we can make these things reasonably long actually. That one's I don't think that was working properly. Um, this one here should hopefully move as well. There we go. And we can lock that in place as well like that. Okay, so I'm going to take the microphone. I'm going to plug in the XLR cable. We've got the shock mount. And what this does is reduce noise. I'm going to leave a little bit of extra cable here. And then with that extra cable, what I'm going to do is use, uh, you can use tape for this but I'm just going to use this wrap, Velcro wrap, and I'm just going to put it on like that just to hold it in place. And again, I've got some extra XLR cable here just, so I can, just enough so that I can adjust the angle, the pitch of the mic here. And then what I'm going to do is just turn slowly as I move the boom pole away from me. And what I'm doing is just loosely wrapping the cable around the boom pole so it's not uh, flopping and getting in the way of things. That's the, the right way to set up a boom pole 
And um, again, each shot you may have to make a, a minor adjustment to the angle of the mic simply by adjusting the set screw. And hopefully that answers most of the questions that might be out there. The last thing I, I do want to mention is please make sure you put everything away carefully. And I'll just go through that right now. The shock mount should be removed each time from the top of the boom pole after you're finished shooting for the day, just so that it doesn't get damaged. The boom pole should be placed back inside the carrying case. If you've got one. Camera, make sure it's off. Separate it. Place it back. Put this away. I'm going to just turn this to the side so it fits in here. Pop that back. Batteries in here. And there we go. Everything should be taken care of and it looks pretty good.